They're being chased, hunted down, and rounded up, told to go away. They are America's new underclass. An expert and syndicated columnist joins us. He says the anti-immigrant hysteria will lead to an American intifada. A what? We'll debate. He washed dishes for 11 years and saved almost $60,000. The government took it all away. But why is it right? We're fighting for the little guy and joining Pedro in his odyssey to somehow get it back. Rick's picks. Here we go. There he went. Oh, my goodness. We'll tell you what happened. And what we do. Speak truth to power. It's a never, never land. I gotta go for a hike. It's a happy day for our country. Want to help? Go to CNN.com slash Rick and finish the sentence. My problem with Congress is... Have at it. You're out in the open. And we welcome you back. I'm Rick Sanchez. We are out in the open. We speak truth to power. Well, tonight, some startling words from one of our country's leading writers on Latin America. Andres Oppenheimer predicts that the highly volatile and incendiary immigration hysteria that's sweeping the country will help spark a, quote, Hispanic intifada, where angry, disadvantaged Hispanic youth stage a rebellion, the American equivalent of the bloody Palestinian uprisings, for example. Here's a cut from his uh, Miami Herald editorial that has sparked the uh, controversy. Here we go. We are creating an underclass of people who won't leave this country and realistically can't be deported. They and their children are living with no prospect of earning a legal status, no matter how hard they work for it. Many of them will become increasingly frustrated, angry, and some of them eventually turn violent. Andres Oppenheimer is good enough to join us now. He's also, we should say, the author of a book called The Saving of Americas, or Saving the Americas, The Dangerous Decline of Latin America and What the U.S. Must Do. Another good conversation about what's happened down there. But I'll tell you, Andres, you are taking on a sacred cow, man. You're defending poor immigrants, uh, Mexicans, illegal immigrants. This is not a popular position. You are not going to win any beauty prizes or any other kind of prizes doing this, you know. Well, Rick, but the truth is that we are creating this underclass. We are giving these people no alternative. We are giving these people no path to legalization. And what I'm especially worried about, Rick, are the children. 1.8 million children who are growing up without papers, without legal papers, and we are going to, we are going to throw them into the labor market with absolutely no possibility to get a job, to get a legal job. So. What are, the, what are we going to do with yeah, them? Yeah, and those are children, and, 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 and they, they didn't even make the decision to come here, quote, illegally, right? I mean, That's they, a good point. They Many they were of them kids. were brought here yeah. when they were two years old or three years old. So we are going to throw them into a labor market where they have absolutely no way of getting a formal illegal job. So they're going to grow up in the streets, uh, and they may join the gangs. And some they're of them, and you know what's funny, a lot of them are just like you and me. I mean, they, they don't speak a lick of Spanish. They play football, they eat pizza and uh, apple pie. I mean, they're, they're, more, they're as much a gringo as any other gringo, right? So I understand, Rick, uh, the people who say that uh, people who uh, enter legally this country uh, should be sent back. Uh, I may not agree with them uh, fully, but what I really can't understand is how can we be uh, so mean against kids who came here, who were brought to this country when they were one? All right, let me, let, let, me just, let me just stop you there for a minute. I want to bring in Dan Stein, a good friend of this show, who's uh, talked to us about these things many, many times. Uh, he believes a Hispanic intifada is no credible threat. But go ahead and address, if you would, the, uh, the point that Andres makes about the 1.8 million kids who, through no fault of their own, ended up in this country and uh, are just little Americans. I mean, you know, they, they, many of them don't even speak English or Spanish very well. Go ahead, Dan. Well, I mean, not so fast, Rick. He did make what I think is viewed as a threat, uh, that there was going to be rampant civil violence in this country of a criminal nature uh -huh. if this country proceeded forward to try to enforce immigration laws. He also says, he ha wants to have it both ways, that he says, we, the U.S., can't enforce immigration laws and make them all leave. So, I mean, I know, you know, he's trying to sort of have it both ways. All right, the other point, the other point, uh, uh, respond to that. The other point here, though, one more well, point. Well, hold on, Dan, Dan I, I, I'm going to let you get that other point in. I just want him to respond to that, and then we'll come right, right back I, to you. I, Cross I, my it's heart. It's absolutely untrue that I made a threat. I mean, read this column, please. I don't know whether you have read it, but I, uh, I make absolutely no threat, nor do I condone the... Uh, uh, any violence, uh, much less to support it. What I'm right. saying is that if we don't do something to give 
upward uh, mobility, uh, a, a, a channel for these young people to join the, the, the economy and to get jobs and to, and to become like uh, citizens like you and me, uh, we're going to throw them into the streets. Dan, they're going to Dan, join the gangs and they're going to turn the island. Andres, let's give Dan a chance. I told him he, he had another I mean, point first, to make. Go ahead. I mean, first of all, this is not a, about Hispanics. This is about people who broke our immigration laws. They come from all over the world, not just from Mexico or Cuba or someplace in Latin America. And secondly, if you really want to help upward mobility, particularly for Hispanic Americans who are here legally, we need to enforce immigration laws so we can tighten labor supply and give employers an opportunity to improve wages and working conditions for all Americans. All right, Andres, the, would, you, Andres would well, you respond to what he said well, about this not all, being about first Hispanics? Of all, first of all, uh, most of the immigrants who come here without documents are from Mexico, are from Central America, are from Latin America, so let's not try to, to play games with that. Number two, um, if, uh, again, uh, the only way to stop this flow of undocumented immigrants to the U.S. is to somehow reduce the income gap between the U.S. and Latin America. No matter how high uh, a fence we build on the border, people will continue coming if people in the U.S. make five, ten times more than in Latin America. Rick, so the man, way man, to stop everyone, the flow... Go ahead, everyone, Dan, finish us up. You get the last word. Everyone watching this program will be dead and buried before we equalize you know, wages with Latin America. What we need is to have comprehensive, serious immigration reform. I agree. And interior enforcement is going to do the job. It's a matter of reducing it. I agree. And I think, I think, I think all three of us would agree that we do not need realistic. some kind of comprehensive uh, immigration reform. And I also would think that NAFTA no, has understand. not helped the people in Latin America and have caused many of them to end up crossing the border as a result because of the way it's been handled. My thanks to both of you. We're out of time. Andres Oppenheim. My pleasure, Dan Stein as well. Thank you both, gentlemen. Coming up, more Rick Pace.